My name is Mark Baer. Welcome back to the Your Town program. I have with me Captain Wayne Porter. The plan for America. Where do we start? Well, <clears throat> so how would you like me to begin? How would well, you like me to launch? Let's, let's introduce you to the audience and kind of tell me sure. how you got here, and uh, and then let's move right into the plan. Sure. Basically, uh, just by way of background, um, I. I was a special assistant for strategy to the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Admiral Mike Mullen. I did that for the last three years, and I had been with him actually uh, three of my last four tours in a similar capacity, looking at kind of a, a strategic uh, connector of dots, if you will, nonlinear connector of dots. Uh, in about 2009, as a result of a comment that I had made in a rare lunch that we had with Secretary Gates, um, Admiral Mullen asked me to take a stab at writing a new national strategy. Just take a, take a stab at it and see what you come up with. Um, I, I enlisted the aid of, uh, as any good Navy officer would, I enlisted the aid of a, of a Marine uh, fighter pilot colonel friend of mine. So he and I uh, barricaded ourselves in my office in the Pentagon and we knocked out what came to be called the, the National Strategic Narrative, which was intended to open a dialogue. Uh, it was purely our views alone. They don't represent the official policy of the United States government, the Department of Defense, or Admiral Mullen, for that matter. It was released by the Woodrow Wilson Center in 2010. Um, actually, in 2011, it was released a year ago. And, uh, and as a result, um, it, it really has kind of done that. It's opened a, a very interesting uh, dialogue across the country. There's a website about it now. We're in Wikipedia now. Uh, and it, it served the purpose, which was kind of try to get Americans to, uh, to recognize who we are in the 21st century and where we're going. And uh, competitory. That's this idea Absolutely. of competition. And let, let's, let's explain that bit of it, because that's what really got me excited that's about great. this. Th that's great. Um, basically, we tried to get our heads around writing a national strategy. You know, where do you start? You know, uh, so we, we took a historical perspective. Uh, we went all the way back to the Treaty of Westphalia, 1648, through Newtonian physics, through, through uh, the evolution of physics and science and how it has impacted our understanding of our physical universe and who we are and where we fit in. Um, and truthfully, what we decided was we needed to identify what, what are our, our, our enduring interests as a nation. Well, they're prosperity and security. But many nations have prosperity and security as their, as their enduring interests. What makes it, us different as Americans? And what we came to realize is, is that we are constrained in our pursuit of security and prosperity by values that characterize us as Americans. We can't just just go take whatever we want. We can't just commit genocide because we want a rare earth element, you know? Maybe some countries can. We don't do that. But those same values that constrain us are the very values that, that empower us as a nation and that provide us uh, credibility and, and influence. So what we came to realize is that we probably weren't smart enough to write a national strategy, but that's not what Americans needed. We thought what Americans needed was was a story to remind us who we are, what is the context in which we live in the 21st century. And central to that theme, we came to realize, was this notion of competition. Uh, for some reason, since our founding as a free market republic, we have excelled across the spectrum of human endeavor through fair competition and in, in every aspect from from art and literature to science and medicine to space exploration, we have excelled through fair competition. And yet, in the last 20 years or so, somehow we've become competition averse as a nation. We, we, uh, it's almost as if we, we dread having competitors. Uh, and in fact, uh, Puck, is, Puck Mickleby is my, was the, the co-author of this National Strategic Narrative. He's fond to remind me and everyone else who listened to him that the root of competition is competare from the Greek, and it means to strive together. So that when, and this is apropos for where we are in time today, so as athletes prepared for Olympic Games, for instance, they would train together. And they trained together because by improving, base, comp competing with each other, it improved the show they would put on in the games. So the objective isn't when the gun goes off to trip your competitor and waddle across the, the finish line. It's actually to improve both of, both of your um, competencies 
through fair competition. And I think we need a renewed sense of, of who we are in this century and the fact that, that our strength lies in competition. It's a very Darwinian concept as well. In fact, I would submit that we're not only at an inflection point in American history right now, we're a Darwinian moment. We're, we're, we are rapidly approaching the carrying capacity of the planet in many ways with nine billion people on the planet this century. The challenges that face us aren't necessarily from one nation or from one group or from one ideology. It's, it's really more about food security and water security and, and energy security. Uh, we have developed the model that the rest of the world is replicating right now. Unfortunately, they're replicating at a rate that, the, that is exceeding the carrying capacity of the planet in many ways. So we need to develop a new model, and, and I think that by through fair competition, we can actually demonstrate the efficacy of a new model of growth, of a model that's based on sustainability. So our sense was we, we lived much of the last part of the last century based on a strategy of containment in which we viewed the world, the strategic world, uh, as a closed system in which you could manipulate enough variables to arrive at a deterministic result, when in fact, our strategic environment is an open system, and, and the tools that you use in an open system aren't necessarily uh, power and force, they're strength and, and influence, and, and competition plays a role in that as well. Yeah, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a compassionate competition and not a Darwinian competition, and in that's fact, a profound difference. Very well said, and you've just reminded me of the piece that I left out, and the fact that we, Puck and I didn't view competition as a one winner, multiple losers proposition. You know, we, we viewed it in terms of, in game theory, it's cooperative game theory. So in other words, leveraging uh, common interests and, and excelling so that there is, there, there are multiple winners. So we don't see the, the increasing interdependence and complexity of our strategic environment as a weakness. We see it as a strength. We see it as a way to leverage interests among nations and people worldwide to improve and achieve common goals. And, and I think there is something to that. That's, that's really what, in any ecosystem, that's what sustainability, adaptation, and competition is all about. Let's talk, talk about uh, putting this into practice, and let's talk about uh, what's going on with Salinas. Sure. Um, I was lucky enough to, uh, to convince Admiral Mullen, to convince Secretary Panetta to allow me to come here on this tour to the Naval Postgraduate School where I was uh, allowed to establish a chair for systemic strategy and complexity, which no one seems to really be able to understand when I blather all this. It, it really is, and the essence of the narrative was, we need to look beyond risk and threat to hope and opportunity. And there is as much hope and opportunity and uncertainty as there is risk and threat. So we need to focus on our trajectory as a nation, not solely focus on our past. Learn lessons from the past, but focus on the future. So I was approached in uh, February by the mayor of Salinas, uh, Dennis Donahue, who had asked me to um, give, him some, uh, give him some ideas about a way to reinvigorate the, the economy of the region, to, to re-energize the Salinas area, and to focus on, truthfully, focus on prosperity, which is, as I said, is one of our enduring interests nationally as well as uh, locally. Uh, and one of the things that I, I think that I, I hit on for him was that many people view, you know, our area here, uh, not just Salinas, but the central region here. We see the problems that we face. We see there are water shortages, and we see uh, that we have uh, periodic unemployment. We have a heavy migratory population in the area, and we tend to see those things as negatives. My, my sense is those are all positives. Those are all the kinds of things that drove us to greatness after World War II. We just need to find a new model of growth, just as we found a model of growth in, in the 1950s in California. I'm a product of that. So my, my sense with them, and in fact, they have now created a Steinbeck innovation effort, uh, partnering with Silicon Valley, and they've decided to focus the energy of Salinas on the greatest challenges, not just nationally, but really globally right now. So Salinas is in an incredible area, surrounded by some amazing research labs and universities, uh, as well as an incredible pool of people who, who really know how to work and want to have some hope and opportunity in their lives. And that all begins with education. So our sense was that if we could reconfigure the systems of the region, 
focused on education first and as that develops into creating what I call an industrial cluster, or actually Michael Porter from Harvard calls an industrial cluster. We have all of the characteristics here in Salinas and in Monterey and in the Central Valley, that have, Central uh, Coast area, that have proven successful in Northern Italy, in Southern Germany, uh, in Boston, and Silicon Valley. The, so what it is is it's a merger of Silicon Valley technology with Salinas agriculture water management and the drive of venture capitalists in Silicon Valley to find alternative sources of energy. So what we've tried to do is we've tried to create a renewable resources industrial cluster where we re-energize and bring manufacturing back into this area based on those challenges that, believe me, will make someone a lot of money when we begin to really turn the corner on, on food security, sustainable agricultural and, agriculture and soil, um, water management, uh, waste management and alternative energy. Okay, now this brings us to how you and I came together. Yes. And now I'm president of the board of uh, the Museum of Monterey, and as we've discussed, the TED conference started here, the TED conference left us, and we'd like to pick up that conversation and what we're calling the uh, Innovators and Creativity Series. And I've been thinking about this for a very long time, and your, when I read your report, I said, because it's postpartisan, it's, it's common sense, uh, I, I said, this is where the conversation I want to discuss, and to discuss across different platforms of, uh, of, of the people doing various forms of life. You know, so, so artists come together with, uh, with diplomats, come together with uh, uh, teachers come together with military people as problem solvers, exactly. dealing with different people. And we, uh, we hit it off because we're looking, okay, here's this, this plan, and you and I are looking at this thing, okay, here's the script, What's, how do you tell this as a story? Exactly. And then I found out that, that uh, why you could speak this language so well is uh, <laughs> going to film school. And yeah, well, kind of, that, this is a different part of your past that most people don't know about. Nearly no one knows about. So, Certainly so 27 years in the Navy, no one knows about. So let, let's hear a little bit about so that. So I credit Naval Postgraduate School with my two Masters of Science degrees. I have to credit USC, where I went to undergrad school. I was a film school graduate. So I actually left USC uh, in film. Uh, I was a documentary writer and producer for a while before I came into the Navy, and then I kind of left all that behind. And, uh, but it was that, I think it was that understanding of the importance a narrative plays in putting things in context for people. I think that, that has really kind of come back to prominence in my, in my mind as I try to understand Systemically addressing the solution set is what we need to do, but we need to be able to tell a story succinctly that's understandable that Americans believe in. And I think Americans understand that, that we have a destiny. It is no longer just our legacy. We, we really need to recreate a legacy for ourselves. The rest of the world desperately needs a strong and, and proactive and cooperative America, America that can really demonstrate a new model of growth and security, and I think we're well positioned to do that. So the first thing that came to mind when we're talking uh, is, okay, how do different people tell this same story? I, I was thinking, you know, Fran Spector, we have Spector Dance here, it's this amazing dance company who's done uh, interpretations of some very yes. difficult scientific issues and ecological issues. I think of uh, Jose Ortiz, the fabulous yes. muralist out in uh, Salinas, yes. writing messages on the wall, listening to the community. Um, some of the historians and storytellers that we have, some of the, so how, because the community has to buy into the story, interpret the story, and um, um, become the story. And so that's the bigger, you know, that that's where, the, the, the game is either won or lost. I, I would, we wrote this to try to get Americans to do just that. We wrote it so that Americans would have a conversations with them, with a, with a conversation amongst themselves to refine themselves in this century and to move forward. If I can just provide a plug because I'm not, I didn't make the website, I don't, there's no one who funds the website. But a local woman, um, Betty Sproul, Dr. Betty Sproul, created 
www.nationalstrategicnarrative.org. And it, it is really kind of an interesting site. She built it. I'm, I'm very proud that she did that. She did it as a concerned citizen. There's no political affiliation. There's no funding behind it. She just does it. Uh, and it's really interesting. And on there, there, there is an opportunity for people to post anything that they can think of that they would like to contribute or stories or anything and that's the kind of movement I would love to see and that's why I'm so intrigued by what you want to do because it is the right thing to do it's the right way to go about doing it and so this is my moment to put out my uh, tin can and uh, museum and uh, there's a b donate button and <laughs> donate for this uh, because Absolutely. again it does take <laughs> it doesn't take a lot of money like like Peter Baldwin was saying you you can figure it out with the camera and this technology and you put the people in the room. It doesn't take a lot, but again, everything takes a little. So if, if you're at home and you want to hear this and um, build this in your community, you know, to you know, feed us those nickels. And I'm going to be asked, because I'm a big supporter of the Monterey Museum, and I, I'm going to be asked, you know, Naval Postgraduate School, our mission is to increase the Navy's uh, combat effectiveness, but it's also to raise the strategic awareness of these brilliant kids we have there. And I, I just wanted to say that we want to be a good neighbor as well, which is why we're so interested in helping the community if we can. And, and then, again, uh, the other piece, as long as I'm out pitching this, is to do this in front of an audience of future leaders. What I, what I find in this community is uh, younger kids are taken care of, and but what you have is 16, 17, 18-year-olds here um, for the museum we'd like to be that place where they could come here people with again Monterey is a, a global brand people here have global ideas have those global ideas shared in front of an audience of future leaders and I think that would be a, quite a profound um, totally agree. profound thing to do um, anyway uh, any last thoughts? We're you're just about down to it. No, I was just going to say that the, one of the points that we make in the National Strategic Narrative is that our greatest natural resource are our kids, uh, is, uh, is the youth of America. Whether they're born here or they come here, choose to come here and contribute to the country. These kids get it. This is their legacy. This is not something we can do for them. This is something they want to do for themselves. But we have a role to empower them. And I think this is a good step towards that. Okay. And, uh, and uh, uh, just so that people can, uh, again, just to reiterate, so people at home can see you speak and see you articulate sure. this. There are some videos online. On the website, there's yeah. a lot of them. So again, again, give that, uh, give that uh, uh, URL, please. Yeah, it's www.nationalstrategicnarrative.org. Okay. Thank you so much for coming. Sure. And, oh, uh, Mark, thanks very much.